Don't grumble. Don't grudge. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Don't assign blame. How many people, instead of solving the problem, just want to assign blame? A husband wants to blame his wife for everything, all the problems, or a wife wants to blame the husband for all the problems, or someone wants to blame the government for all the problems, or maybe a church member wants to blame the elders for all the problems. Well, blame is not the way to go. Remember, chapter 3 tells us we ought to use our tongues in the right way. And grumbling and mumbling and murmuring and complaining and condemning is just simply not the way. He says, Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Jesus is, was ready at that time to judge the Jewish nation and take their wealth away from them. And that's what he did in the year A.D. 70. And they should have taken comfort in this. And that's what he's saying. So he says, like the farmer, like the planter, you be patient. Verse 10, my brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and affliction and of patience. The example that comes to my mind is Jeremiah. If you read the book of Jeremiah, you find a man who from before his birth, God destined him to be a prophet. And what a great prophet he was, but he got discouraged from time to time. And he was the weeping prophet because he had a lot to cry about. And although he faced much affliction, Jeremiah persevered. Jeremiah was the prophet who would not quit. And he was blessed. And he's an example for us to not give up. In fact, verse 11, our final verse says, Indeed, we count them happy who endure. We're blessed if we endure. We're happy if we endure. Don't give up. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. They had read the book of Job because he was a patriarch way back in the old days of the patriarchs. And Job suffered terribly. And yet, we see the end of the Lord and how that he blessed Job twice as much in the end as he did at the beginning. Job had to endure his affliction. And it may be that during these days of uncertainty, you are facing a lot of fear. You are facing a lot of anxiety. And the unknown will certainly produce these feelings inside of us. But we need to remember this. We count them happy which endure. And that's what he's saying here. Indeed, we count them happy who endure. And that's what this, these first 11 verses are all about. Whether it be persecution of wicked people, they're going to meet their judgment. But what we have got to do is react in faith. Trust God. Hold on. A couple of verses that come to mind. Our Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. We hold on. We endure. Revelation 2, verse 10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee the crown of life, Jesus says. And then there's 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Wherefore be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God is very much in control, no matter what happens. We're not to fear him or what can kill the body, but we are to fear him who can kill and destroy both body and soul in hell. So we need to have the proper respect and view of God. And with that, we can trust God and follow him by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When we listen to God through the Bible, it engenders faith in our hearts. The kind of faith, James says, will move us to action. The action here is not a passive patience where we just sit back and wait. No, it's active patience. It's endurance, the endurance of a marathon runner. It's described in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, where he says that we should run the race set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So as we look to Jesus, we find the captain of our salvation and we look to one who will help us to endure and finish our race. We appreciate you tuning in this evening. We're going to meet again on Wednesday evening, just like this, at 6 o'clock. We hope you'll tune in then and we'll study the Bible together.